now it is important to look at some quality of service aspects of uh, various applications which run on top of the next generation network. To begin with, voice over IP seems the most uh, eligible candidate for consideration because uh, it represents in the most uh, wide and generalizable manner uh, the applications which run including multimedia, voice and video applications. So we'll start with uh, developing the background for uh, QS um, requirements, uh, elucidation, and then we'd look at a comparison between uh, uh, what are the voice over IP requirements uh, in NGNs, uh, which are different from or similar to the requirements which have existed for a long time in public switched telephone networks based pure voice. So the journey starts from uh, 1876 when Alexander Graham Bell uh, in Bell Labs had the first experiment to have uh, communication, uh, wired communication for uh, uh, audio over a telephone line. Uh, so that was the genesis and that resulted into the evolution of telephony. So we moved from uh, public switch telephone networks, public land mobile networks, which were basic networks requiring uh, only uh, the operator to worry about voice alone. So these were very original and uh, patent uh, voice networks. Then uh, there was a requirement to add certain other uh, services on top of those uh, telephone voice networks. So that turned out to be more like a service. So it means voice was no more uh, monolithically and uh, by itself as a singular application related to that network. Certain other uh, services also emerged. So voice actually got a new look that is it was a service now running on a network. Uh, in NGNs, uh, the uh, provisioning of voice is considered to be more like an application. So it means uh, different applications can provide different voice related services. So it means that we have seen the migration from being a pure uh, uh, telephony oriented uh, viewpoint on voice to uh, what NGNs are all about IP centricity. Uh, this actually requires quality of service because uh, in IP most of the traffic is best effort unless it is enabled to have priority and certain other QS enabled features. Uh, uh, there's a very interesting comparison between uh, uh, the network parameters and the performance indicators in uh, PSTNs versus NGNs uh, with regards to quality of service. For instance, if you look at bandwidth, um, PCM encoded 64 kilobits per second is an acceptable audio quality uh, on PSTN's circuit switch networks. Uh, but in uh, uh, NGNs, the bandwidth can be increased and uh, more advanced coding schemes other than PCM can be incorporated to transmit very high quality audio. For instance, in uh, uh, 5G networks, for, in, uh, for example, uh, the concept of uh, crystal voice is used. That is voice which is so clear and so high fidelity that it, it, it's crystal clear. So it's known as crystal voice. Uh, so uh, bandwidth is uh, not an issue because in NGNs, any user who can, can subscribe to more bandwidth can have better audio. But the problem is with the delay because of the statistical multiplexing uh, in uh, NGNs, uh, because there are no guarantees all the time. So some kind of latency or delay is going to be experienced. So delay as such and delay variation that is jitter are quite bothersome. So let's look at the uh, uh, parameter by parameter and uh, KPI by KPI, uh, the differences between uh, voice over IP that is provided on NGN and voice which is there on PSTNs. Uh, let's start with bit rates. So PSTN is locked on to 64 kbps. It is from the G.711 IDUT standard. Um, but as far as VoIP is concerned, there is a great flexibility. For example, uh, adaptive uh, multi-rate is from 3GPP, acquired from 3GPP, can offer um, rate adjusting audio depending upon the network performance. So voice over IP is uh, way too flexible with regards to the bit rate. Um, similarly, 
in uh, circuit switched uh, PSTNs, uh, since there is absolute uh, circuit switching, uh, there is no flexibility to accommodate large number of users. But here in NGNs, we have uh, statistical multiplexing. So it, it, it results into accommodating more users with a certain degree of performance compromise. But again, that is so uh, so nominal or so meager that it can hardly be noticed at times. Uh, so this results into um, handling voice packets on NGN uh, with the, the processing of their headers. So including more headers uh, like uh, um, real-time protocol, the family we'll, we'll study, uh, the user datagram protocol, and the IP at the network layer. Now, adding up these uh, headers to the voice payload means that uh, the original um, data rate that is specific to that particular encoding scheme uh, increases. So if we are talking about G.711, if you're using all these headers in packetized voice, the effective data rate is going to be more than 64 kbps per user. Uh, then we have the delay. Uh, in 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 circuit switched PSTN networks, uh, the call establishment uh, delay end to end, uh, including the uh, switching delay, including the signaling delay, all included, it does not normally exceed 150 milliseconds, uh, which is uh, acceptable for uh, uh, for uh, human ear. But when it comes to um, um, IP-based NGNs, uh, there are a lot of processes which are going on with the packetized voice here, like in, uh, multiplexing is taking place, uh, buffering may be required, uh, sometimes uh, traffic shaping is required in certain networks which are resource starved and have, uh, have a lot of load, uh, and then certain priority uh, enqueuing and uh, scheduling mechanisms are implemented. All these incur uh, uh, delays. Uh, so it means that uh, all these delays are going to add up to an extent where the audio quality is going to uh, suffer in delay and delay variance. Uh, so it means some kind of mechanism has to be introduced. So quality of service, we, we've covered it in detail earlier, uh, can implement uh, high priority uh, traffic scheduling. So using the highest priority for audio, uh, it can always be put at the head of the line in a, in a queue for uh, being scheduled uh, uh, in at first. So this can result into uh, uh, delays that can go up to uh, uh, 400 milliseconds, which is not acceptable. But again, this is uh, the world of uh, IP. So that is that results into some kind of degraded performance. But again. Uh, using priority queuing, you, we can still bring it back to around 40 milliseconds. Then we have uh, jitter um, again because of uh, the unexpected behavior. Uh, we can have uh, variable delay uh, for uh, the arrival of audio packets on the receiving side. Uh, so this can cause uh, variable playback experience. So you might have experienced this while while talking to your loved ones. Uh, you may have noticed that suddenly uh, audio starts to get worse and it, it may even get dropped. So in order to uh, handle such a problem, specifically to handle jitter, um, one thing can be uh, encoded in the network, that is a QS enabled path once um, established and can be used for all the subsequent packets which belong to the same stream of a certain audio conversation. And then there could be the usage of a, a buffer at the receiver end in, in the player uh, such that if, if, if a player or if some uh, audio system is playing back the audio on the speaker, then it is buffered at the playout buffer known as jitter buffer for a while and then it is played back. So it is buffered or enqueued, then played. This results into uh, arrival of more packets, uh, which are then converted from, from packet into uh, analog voice to be sent on to the speakers. This process 
takes time. So by the time it is getting played back, more packets would be received. Uh, then we have a uh, uh, difference in the network equipment between PSTNs and VoIP enabled NGNs. Uh, in PSTNs, there is a beautiful architecture of uh, exchanges. So having these exchanges results into well established and expected performance. In VoIP, uh, this is carried out by something similar. We have servers. These servers run uh, the session initiation protocol and diameter. Uh, instead of signaling standard 7. That's another obvious difference. Then uh, convergence is something that means different uh, uh, different services all on IP actually result into sharing of resources because it's at the end of the day, even if it is video or pure audio or it is a Skype or WhatsApp call, uh, it is essentially an IP packet. Uh, this results into lower uh, capital and operational expenditures. This is not the case in PSTNs because PSTNs are all about audio, so no comparison can be made here. Then uh, PSTNs do not have a flexible or adaptive service architecture, but NGNs do have that. And uh, lastly, uh, this availability or uh, reliability of a system has to be an important consideration uh, again. PSTNs have uh, five nines availability per year that results into or that translates into five minutes per year. Um, um, it, it's, a, it's an excellent reliability um, figure. But in, in VoIP based NGNs, it, they have low reliability uh, because of certain features and one of them being that in PSTNs, the exchanges and the telephone lines uh, right up to your telephone set are powered by the uh, operator. But uh, in voice over IP, the powering up of the end devices is the responsibility of the user. So if there's no electricity in your home, well, um, you would not be able to get the voice quality or the, the voice service on NGN.